Today on Hashtag Moms on a Mission, we sit down with Jen Presley, a mom and a bodybuilder who shares with us her struggle at working mom's guilt. Then we chat via Skype with Dana Hilmer, a certified positive psychology coach and consultant who shares tips on overcoming the guilt issues each mom deals with. We are moms, we are friends, we are moms on a mission. Hi guys, welcome to the show. You're watching Hashtag Moms on a Mission on Woman to Woman TV. I'm Lucia Dragos. And I'm Aisha Eldek. And today's topic is working mom's guilt. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a fun show as usual. It's going to be very uh, like s stuff that you are going to wonder or you are probably experiencing right now as a working mom. So um, what do you feel about that, Lucia? Oh, let me just tell you. My son is six first grader. A year ago when he turned five and he started kindergarten, then my mom's guilt went away. Five years I was struggling all the time. I think uh, when it's uh, earlier years, it's much harder. It's the similar situation with me too. But even now, um, it's, it's very interesting because uh, with the after school, I offered him to uh, put him to after school with some, uh, you know, sports programs, some homework programs, and he goes, hmm, I really don't want to do that, mommy. I'm like, why? You know, you're going to have friends, you're going to have a lot of fun. He's like, no, I just want to be with you. Yeah. That hits me. You know, it's like, okay, so I need to spend more time with him. I know he's a, a third grader now, and mm. he needs to go to school, like, that other chunk of time, that couple hours that he has extra, he doesn't want to uh, spend with anybody else but his family. So he just wants to have a family time, he says. So um, I think that's uh, one of the things that, uh, that hits me. <laughs> I think every mom goes through that. I know, I, I think so too. And uh, I'm sure uh, our viewers uh, are going through that too. And if you have any thoughts and yeah. any, uh, anything at all uh, that you want to uh, send to us, please uh, make sure that you tweet to us, to yes. Lucia Dragos uh, or uh, Aisha Aldek or Woman to Woman TV. And now actually we're on Meerkat, we're live streaming the show, so um, if you have any questions, then just shoot them, feel free. And um, we have a wonderful guest, uh, wonderful mom, wonderful working mom, Jan Presley, who's going to uh, join us uh, after our short break, and uh, we will hear from her. We are moms, we are friends, we are moms on a mission. Jen Presley is the director of brand strategy for a $90 million online retailer, a devoted mom of a 10-year-old daughter, and a bodybuilder at 43 years old. Jen has lived and worked in New York City for over 25 years after moving to New York in 1990 to pursue her BFA. In her professional life, Jen has over 15 years of experience leading and executing award winning brand solutions for web and print in the retail, educational, and nonprofit sectors, having served in leadership roles at several New York City based design firms. Jen's clients include the Museum at FIT, Travelers, Liberty Mutual, Columbia Business School, the Fresh Air Fund, the New York Foundling, and the Tenement Museum. She is most passionate about working with organizations that have critical missions with a positive impact on the lives of children and families in New York City. Jen is a Cooper Union alumna where her BFA studies focused on painting, color theory, and composition, laying the groundwork for her work in branded visual communications. Jen's award-winning work has been recognized by Graphic Design USA, W3 Awards, and Black Book AR100. Thanks uh, for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. So we're talking with Aisha about working mom's guilt, and uh, we both experienced it at some point. How was it for you? Well, my daughter is 10 now, so it's different now, and it's evolved over time. When she was younger, I definitely had more of the mom's guilt. Um, now, I really don't believe mom's guilt is a good thing to have, and it's something that I almost don't even want in our vocabulary. 
Um, but it's much harder when they're little. Before they go to school, um, you don't want to leave. And it's very hard to leave. I remember leaving my daughter when I was still breastfeeding. And that was really hard also because your body isn't even ready to, s to say goodbye during yes. the day. Um, so you have to deal with that. Um, but now it's uh, working and raising a daughter uh, and being a single parent means that I have the opportunity to have really authentic experiences with her and tell her about what I do, involve her in what I do, and even bring her to the office, which is amazing, and she absolutely loves it. I know that you uh, work for a company, uh, and you recently uh, got a big responsibility for a new company, mm -hmm. and you work a lot. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I think you also travel yes. uh, at times. and. Um, you also started something new. You started bodybuilding recently. I did. Mm -hmm. it's and amazing. Which is, which is amazing. <laughs> like yeah. And she it loves it. And I take her to. The, I take my daughter to the gym. Amazing. I would like to hear about that. Like how how do you deal with um, leaving when you do the trips? Like how does it impact you and or her? Like what is her reaction to th these changes and additions? Let's put it that way. Yes. That's a good <laughs> question. Uh, well, she always wants to come on my trips, and I have promised her that at some point she will, and I do want to bring her, um, make it a l and turn it into a long weekend. Um, but I try to involve her as much as I can in it, uh, so that you know she does get upset when I leave, and I do bring her to the gym sometimes. Um, but that started uh, actually about three years ago. I started CrossFitting, and it's evolved into bodybuilding. I have a bodybuilding competition coming up in four weeks. Um, that I'm training for, and it's, it's just a great opportunity also to be a really good example to her mm. of all the things you can do in your life, um, and it's a wonderful way to release stress as well, you know, <laughs> when you're constantly engaging in physical exercise. Um, so it really becomes an issue of time management at this point. It's like there's just never enough time to, yeah. do, to do everything. Yeah. Um, and I really, I tap into my network of friends and family when it comes to maybe having to pick her up from school. Mm -hmm. I have people I, sh I share that with. Um, so um, it's kind of a we are one village, it takes a village mm -hmm. mentality, yeah. um, where everyone's really caring for each other's children and we're involving every all the kids in real experiences and letting them participate in what we do right. instead of making it separate. Yeah. And I always try to tell her, when I ask her about her school day, I tell her about my work day and uh, really go into detail so that she feels like she's a part of it and we're right. not missing each other's lives. You brought a great point when you said that you, we have to role model for them. Yes. Because that's very important to show them uh, that we need me time, yeah, our time, our own time for, to do the things that we love and also that if we want a career we should pursue it. I used to, um, my son, who is in the control room right now, uh, <laughs> with your son. Yes. Back in the day, like when he was younger, he used to get upset when I had to go to work. And he's like, do you have to go out? And I needed to sit down and explain. I didn't want to do any of that, you know, you're young, you don't understand these kind of things, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I actually sat down like he's an adult person. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is what mommy needs to do in order for us to get more uh, of these toys or if we want to go to a museum or th do this you know freely you know we want some comfort zone and if mommy works we'll have that comfort but that would be my explanation to him and then he'll be like oh yeah that makes sense and actually I throw in there I, I say the same thing and then I say and and also I, I have to work because I love what I do right because I want to make him aware that you have a choice you can choose your work. You have to choose something mm -hmm. that you love. And I love what I do, so I want to go. I want to ask one thing. Uh, I know uh, all the moms have their uh, ways of, um, not, the, not rewarding, but uh, is there something that you tell uh, your daughter, Kate, um, that, um, you know, when I come back, we're going to do something special. We're going to do this. We do plan quality time throughout the week, but I, I, wa I don't want her to feel like, um, the time that we have requires some kind of reward I for see. having that time that um, we're all doing what we need to do and what we want to be doing and it's all a good thing. 
Okay. Um, but we have, we kind of make a routine. So like Friday night is um, pizza and movie. You know, we have a thing that we do and we get manicure and pedicures together on weekends. Um, so we do stuff like that together. Absolutely. Now let's take a little break and when we come back we have on Skype Dana Helmer who is going to share some tips on how we can deal with this working mom anxiety. Okay, fantastic. Working mom's guilt, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> okay, let's take a break. We are moms, we are friends, we are moms on a mission. Dana is a certified positive psychology coach and consultant and is passionately committed to helping women live their truth and create the life they really want to live. Dana has been featured on hundreds of radio and television shows across the country and she writes and speaks on topics related to happiness, optimal living, leadership and making a difference. Dana is the founder of the Thrive Circle, an online program designed to help you gain the clarity, courage, and confidence needed to create lasting positive change in your life. Dana lives in a beautiful shoreline town in Connecticut with her college sweetheart and their three boys. To receive free tips on how to live your truth and create the life you crave, go to danahilmer.com. Welcome back. You're watching hashtag Moms on a Mission on Woman to Woman TV. I'm Lucia Dragos. And I'm Aisha Eldick. And we have on Skype Dana Helmer. So Dana, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me today. We were talking about working mom's guilt and we have Jen here. And I was saying that I had guilt issues for five years <laughs> because I felt it's kind of a choice that I can leave my son in a nursery school or let him stay with me at home. But when he started kindergarten, it's mandatory. so. He has to be there, so I didn't really felt guilty that much. And same thing with Aisha. Yeah, uh, younger and times felt uh, like I felt more guilty. Like I uh, just didn't want to leave him because uh, right now I have twin babies at home, and uh, every time I <laughs> they are two years old, but every time I go somewhere or I do work, I just uh, want to smell. Uh, I just miss their smell, and then every time I go back, I'm like, I want to smell you right now. <laughs> But isn't that so perfect because you need the getaway to take care of yourself, but then you come back and you want them all that much more and you want to smell them and hold them and, and enjoy them that much more, right? So you do, need, you do need to get away once in a while to take <laughs> care of yourself. A couple things that I'd love to share with you, first of all, is getting really clear on your priorities. Um, you know, I think a lot of times you know, we feel pulled in so many different directions and we have a lot of requests, right? Requests for being part of the PTO or doing this fundraiser or taking on yet another work assignment or whatever it happens to be and to be really clear on your priorities you know you can only do so much and so for me I kind of put it any request through a certain lens you know does this either a help me spend time with the people that I love most B does it help me take care of myself my body to be healthy and of course does it help me with my work to move my dreams forward and you know, the reality is most of us uh, work now, most, work, mo most mothers work now. And it's interesting, um, about I don't know, three years ago, I had the pleasure of interviewing Stacey Morrison. And if you don't know who she is, she's the previous editor of Red Book Magazine. And of course, Red Book is all about balancing and the whole juggling act. Mm -hmm. And I remember very clearly uh, Stacey saying to me that here she was, the editor in chief of a magazine all about juggling everything, and she realized we really can't juggle everything perfectly and have a perfect balance every day. It's just completely unattainable. And so rather to look at your life and your week and your month and say, over the course of that week, over the course of that month, have I been able to balance my top priorities in a way that I feel good about? And also getting very, very clear on the fact that you cannot be in two places at once. So when you're at work, be at work, be present, be there 100%. But likewise, when you're home with your children, be there, be present, be there 100%. So I think a lot of it is really learning how to focus on being present and owning our choices. You know, we know our priorities, we know our values, own the decision that you make. And once you make that decision, don't be guilty about it. 
be completely present with it. But likewise, when you get back to being with your kids, be present with them as well. The reality of, of today is that most of us need to have jobs to support having a lifestyle that we're trying to afford for our family and for our children. But I think very importantly, you, for you to be the best mother, you need to take care of yourself. And I have an example that for me uh, was very eye-opening um, at a young age. Kind of, you know, you learn through things that are sad sometimes. Um, my mom actually did stay home with my sister and I, and she did a lot, a lot of great things for us. You know, great things in the way of the shoulds. You know, she made these beautiful dinners, and the house is gorgeous. And she did all the things she thought a good mom, you know, quote unquote, should do. But what she didn't do is she didn't take care of herself. Um, she became very, very heavy. She, I think she was depressed. She did not follow her dreams. I think she very much lived for us. And so uh, my mom, you know, there's a lot of things I'm grateful for, and I love her very much. But she died seven years ago, and I do not remember her smile. And to me, that would have been the biggest gift my mom could give me, would have been the gift of her smile. And so what I tell moms uh, when they say things like that is, you know, you as a mother are showing your children so many things, including how to, how to embrace life and how to take care of yourself and how to love the world that you're in and the life that you have. And you want your kids to love their life. You want your kids to be thriving. They're only going to be thriving and see that all that is possible if they see that through the people that are close of, closest to them, especially you being their mother. And so if they can see you smiling and they can see you thriving, ultimately you're giving so much to them. And, you know, without ending this on a totally sad note, I really do feel that that would have been the biggest thing my mom could have given to me. And I would give anything right now to remember her being a happy person and to remember her smile, and I don't. So um, I do think that's something that we need to remember, that our happiness is so important. Um, whether that happiness is found through pursuing a career, through taking care of yourself and working out, through pursuing a hobby. I mean, I think so many of us feel guilty if we do anything that's away from the house, but the fact is you need to pursue your happiness, and if you don't, you will not give that to your children and your happiness is contagious. You actually have heard many times they say happy mom, happy baby, but you put it in the right words and one doesn't exclude the other. One does not exclude the other and I think the key is for you to be present when you're with your family, right? So I find myself doing this too, you know, you'll be at home and you're multitasking, and you're returning a text or you're checking your emails or, you know, you're barely listening to what they're saying because you're really busy doing something else. I think the more I know for myself anyway, that I push the pause button, I say, wait a minute, this can wait because the sound of that little voice right now is the most important thing in the world, right? So to really stop, look at them in the eyes and just soak up what they have to say and what they're telling you. And so the more that you can put that aside, now that's not to say that work isn't going to infiltrate your home sometimes, it will sometimes, right? So um, creating some rules for yourself. You know, I will not look at my email before breakfast in the morning so I can take care of myself in the morning, or I will not look at email or respond within the key family time of six o'clock to 8.30 or whatever that happens to be for your family. You may have to go back at it at night at nine o'clock when the kids are in bed, but creating some rules for you that allow you to focus on your family in a way that you truly enjoy, that's gonna recharge you, first of all. Second of all, and you know, equally as importantly, is your kids will know that you're completely present for them. And I think that that's really important. It's that quality of that, I think more than the quantity. There's a lot of moms that stay home all day where you may be with your kids all day, but you're still distracted and you're not always doing things 100% for them. You're not always playing a game or baking cookies. You know, you're still managing life and you're still busy and you're still distracted and you still have other things you wanna do as well. The reality is I don't think stay-at-home mothers are always 100% present any more than anybody else. You know, it's a practice. I think all of us, whether we're stay-at-home mothers or we're working mothers, need to develop um, a practice for ourselves where we are present with the people that we love um, when we can be, right? So um, that simply just looks a little bit differently uh, depending on where you happen to work, whether it be in the home or whether you work outside the home, but being present when you can be and creating some rules around your work. It's more the quality time rather than the quantity time. It is. So, and, I also, yeah. and I also think too, you know, it's funny, I think a lot of women suffer from perfectionism. Uh, do the two of you, does that resonate yes, for the two of you all? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, that and, up. <laughs> right. And I'm a recovering perfectionist as well. And <laughs> 
it's funny. There's a book that I read, and it was a great book. It's called Being Happier by Tal Ben Shahar. And he talks a lot about perfectionism and how that can be kind of a real barrier to happiness because in the quest to be perfect, we're pursuing an ideal that's not realistic. And so ultimately, if you can embrace being good enough and letting go of being perfect, what you're really doing is embracing what life is. You know, what is the reality of your life? What is the reality of your situation? Whatever that happens to be. And looking at that for what it is and saying to yourself, okay, this is my reality. What can I do to make it the best that I could do, given my time constraints, given my current circumstances, or given whatever, you know, whatever's going on in my life right now? That's a realistic look at what life is. So I think um, if when we're being perfectionists, we think we can be all things, all people all the time. But if we embrace being an optimalist instead, and an optimalist focuses on reality, what is the reality of my situation? How can I make this the best that it can be? And a real optimalist knows that they can't do everything, and they certainly can't do everything perfectly. So it really puts you in the position of being realistic, grounded in the reality of your life, and making choices that move you forward in a more positive way, rather than thinking I can be perfect all the time to everybody all the time, because that's just not realistic. Um, you know, one thing that I um, had a kind of an aha moment, this is probably, I don't know, four or five years ago, I realized that my husband, and I think a lot of men are like this, can get out of work, and at eight o'clock at night after dinner, can sit down on the sofa, doesn't matter that the room is completely trashed, doesn't matter that laundry is piled up on the sofa and the coffee table next to him, but he can sit down on that sofa and he can zone out all that chaos and he can relax because it's, it's his time to relax. That's, and I would look at him and marvel and I think, that's not fair, I wish I could do that. You know, that stuff is waiting for me. And I wouldn't let myself relax until it was done. So, you know, you can kind of guess what happens in that, that scenario. It means that I never really gave myself the permission to relax because I might not be done folding the laundry and making that living room perfect and clean to sit down and relax in until 11 o'clock, right? So I made a rule for myself that I'm going to give myself permission to also have time to relax at a certain time. You know, for me, it's usually 9 or 9.30. doesn't matter if there's chaos around me. doesn't matter if the laundry's all over the place. In fact, I'm even going to feel victorious if that laundry stays there for two or three or four days because <laughs> it's a symbol almost of letting go, right? Letting go of that need to be perfect because you're not getting any brownie points, right? Nobody's giving you a star right. because you decided to do the laundry every day before you relaxed, right? So I think a lot of times for women, it's giving ourselves the permission that we don't need to have everything perfect and tidy and neat and organized and everything else to give ourselves permission to finally sit down and relax. And uh, I encourage you to embrace chaos on your living room sofa and your surroundings for a few days and just give yourself that permission, you know, whenever you can. That sofa sounds like my sofa right now. Uh, <laughs> there is there is uh, a laundry on one uh, part of the couch and I left it there and I said, you know, I'm going to do this when I can because I cannot do this right now. Because <laughs> I, like you said, I needed that me time and I needed to take care of uh, stuff that I needed to do to stay sane pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, it makes uh, a lot of sense because my husband is the same way. Even though he works like long hours, um, he goes to that corner of the couch even though that's a war zone, like uh, <laughs> I have twin babies and like the stuff is like all over the place. And uh, I found myself one day collecting everything and while he's uh, doing his uh, game on his phone, I'm like, wait a minute, what <laughs> am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I started managing, like it, it's, it's hard, it's difficult, but it is, uh, it, it's a progress, it's getting there, but um, once you manage to do that, I think uh, it is very important to have that moment of, to yourself because uh, that uh, keeps you very, very sane. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, too, um, actually, two thoughts. One is um, having that moment to yourself. I I'd encourage every person, every woman, every mom to think about what is it that really is optimal me time, right? So what recharges you? What do you really enjoy doing? And for one person, it may be doing yoga. For another person, it may be going for a walk. For another person, it could be working out or writing in a journal, whatever that happens to be. 
But to try to take that time again, completely without any guilt whatsoever, um, every day, you know, and it may just be 10 minutes, but there's kind of a spiral effect of doing something positive for yourself and feeling good that that positive feeling that you get from doing that, even if it was only 10 minutes, that is going to go with you throughout the whole day. And I don't know if you ever noticed, you know, how you start a day ends up being kind of how the whole day goes. So I know for a long time I was using my cell phone as an alarm clock. And I found that when I was doing that, that I would wake up and the first thing I would do would be look at emails, you know, like I had missed all sorts of important news since I went to bed at 1130. And that's just ridiculous. It starts your day very anxious, you know, very um, focusing very much on your do list, where if you can create a morning routine for yourself that allows for you to embrace a little bit of peace and maybe do something that you enjoy. Um, one thing that I have started doing um, that I really enjoy, and it's in the shower, I've got to take a shower anyway, is think about what am I looking forward to today? Not what do I need to do today? I think that's what a lot of moms do, right? You wake up with that, oh my gosh, I got so much to do. And you, you know, the head is going the minute your feet hit the floor on what you need to do on your do list. But to push the pause button, you know, get up, give yourself time to breathe, get into the shower and think about what am I looking forward to today? It may be a busy day. You may have a lot of things to do, but there's still some things in that day that you can take that are golden nuggets for yourself. You know, even something as simple as I look forward to picking up my child from school because I can take them out and we can go to the park for 10 minutes. Or I look forward to all of us having a family dinner tonight. I think we are all be home tonight. We can make a dinner and we can relax together. Or I look forward to just taking time out to call a good girlfriend for 10 minutes that I haven't talked to in a while. Whatever that looks like for you, um, to take that time to think about that because that sets the stage for your day of what you're looking forward to rather than that anxiety of what do I have to do? You know, what is my do list? Those were great points and great suggestions and I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's such a pleasure being on. And ladies, let go of the guilt. Be kind to yourself. Remember to talk to yourself the way you would talk to a good girlfriend. So when you feel that guilt, talk to yourself like a girlfriend and let, let it go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Well, that was for today's show. You're watching Hashtag Moms on a Mission on Woman to Woman TV. If you have any questions or suggestions, tweet at Lucia Dragos at Eldekaishi or at Woman to Woman TV. We are friends, we are moms on a mission.